So first of all, I'd like to thank everyone here um, that invited me to tell my side of the story um, as a child born from surrogacy and now fighting against surrogacy. I'm grateful and extremely honored to be in such a place. Uh, this is more than I expected and I am very emotional, I have to say. Um, my entire story I will share with you with a lot of sincerity, a lot of humility. Uh, it's the first time I'm speaking in front of such a big group of people that are so bright, so I'm a little nervous, I have to say. But I do think that my words today are important um, because all, all too often, unfortunately, uh, we forget the people that are the most affected by surrogacy. But these people, they never give uh, their consent, they never have their word, and those are the children that are born from surrogacy. These children that are ripped from their mothers at birth to be sold to strangers. Kind of like cars that you order from factories that you, I mean, pick options that you may or may not like. Um, and these children are considered just like vulgar objects and products. I am today a product of surrogacy, created, sold, bought, and I'd like to tell you my side of the story so you can understand how it affected me and why today we can't just simply regulate surrogacy. Um, we have to abolish it purely and simply for the good of the child and of course for the rights of children. A child should never be the subject of such a contract and above all, should never ever be the subject of a transaction. So as I said, we're now going to travel back 40 years. Um, that's when my story all started, even before my own birth. My intended parents met. My intended mother already had a son with another man. My parents had a very successful business, very, very smart people. I have to give them that. Um, my mother was 11 years older than my father. The money was flowing. They were at the peak of their careers. And I do believe that at some point my mother kind of forgot her biological clock. And so at one point they decided to start a family, but it was a little too late. At this stage, my father was 48. My, my father, sorry, was 37 and my mother was 48. And my mother already had problems with infertility. According to my father, with whom I had a recent discussion, he wanted a child from his own genes. So adoption was completely out of the, uh, of the uh, picture. And surrogacy to them was the only option, rather than giving up on having a child. Selfish decision, I believe, but it's their story. So they looked up the United States, and more specifically Louisville, Kentucky, uh, to find an agency that could help them find a surrogate mother. My parents first gave the agency, of course, a list of criteria concerning the woman that should and what she lo should look like. I personally was born through to traditional surrogacy, not gestational surrogacy, so my surrogate mother is biologically related to me. Even though, to my opinion, it makes absolutely no difference if the mother is biologically linked to the child or not, because to me, the mother is the one who has the child inside her womb for nine months and, of course, gives birth to the child. About a year goes by, we're in 1991. My parents um, had a surrogate mother, but she wasn't holding the embryos. And so they had to be rematched with what would be my biological mother. Um, and thankfully, she, uh, she got pregnant only two months after signing the, uh, the contract. It's often said that the agencies look at women's psychology through very thorough tests, that they make sure they don't have any debt to pay, but we know that that's not true. $14 billion was the surrogacy market in 2022. And do you honestly think that we're going to look too closely at women who might even lie during their interviews? I don't think so. My case is a perfect example. My biological mother, and um, she wasn't mentally stable. 
she had a huge history with depression. But on top of that, just before I was born, she had lost a son, aged of two and a half years old, in an absolute tragic domestic accident. So I think you can put yourself in her place. Mentally, she wasn't there at all. She was completely devastated after that. She was in debt, and she had to put on a brave face for her family, her children, and her husband. This agency that only saw what it wanted to see when it hired her, and that's the money that she could generate. They abused of, a situ of the situation of a woman that needed money to feed her children and pay her bills. So I was born on December 10th, 1991, a date that was chosen actually by my intended parents because funny enough, it fell between my intended mother's birthday, who was born on December 5th, and my biological mother, who was born on December 15th. I had to be a Christmas baby actually. But even that was decided for me, can you imagine? In surrogacy, births can even be planned out and decided. And I'm not quite sure how that is in the best interest of the child. And that's where it gets a bit emotional for me. Um, as soon as I was born, I wasn't placed in the arms of my biological mother. The mother who had carried me for nine months, um, the one who fed me, the one who spoke to me, the one who I felt every emotion invade her when she was pregnant. The one who in the end was the only person I knew. No, no, I had to take the great leap of the infant out of my mother's womb into the cold, austere world, the hospital lights, and I had to be sold and finalize the transaction into the arms of my adoptive parents, whom I didn't know of. And that, unfortunately, was the first trauma that would write the rest of my life, the trauma of abandonment. So as a child, I was already showing signs of the, tra the trauma of uh, abandonment. My parents couldn't leave me. I would be hysterical. I was a very complicated child. Um, I was always afraid of rejection. I had trouble making friends. My parents couldn't leave me anywhere, sleepovers. Parties, I would, I would go in uh, this hysterical crisis, and so they couldn't leave me. I was just afraid, unfortunately, that they, I would suffer a second abandonment every time they left, they left me. But at that point in time, I was already going through an inner battle. How could I build myself without knowing where I came from? During my adult life, things got worse. I sank into alcohol addictions. I even was raped um, because I was constantly putting myself on edge. I made several suicide attempts. My life wasn't the best. Um, I had a hard time having normal friendships. I would suffocate people because I was afraid that they would leave me. I was alone. I was very, very lonely. I sang it to a lot of depressions. Uh, I'm sorry. I was also never able to find a good job. I wasn't stable. And I had a hard time finishing my studies. Then, thank God, I met my husband. Uh, who gradually helped me rebuild my life as it is today with a lot of patience, a lot of love. He let me lash out all my emotions and understood exactly why I reacted the way I would. Today I have three beautiful children, but unfortunately they in turn suffer from my traumas. My daughter, my oldest, Eleanor, suffers from the trauma of abandonment. And my son, Theodore, my second, suffers from the trauma of rejection. Unfortunately, they suffer in turn from the traumas because I do thoroughly believe that all of these are transgenerational. So surrogacy didn't just affect me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Surrogacy didn't just affect me, unfortunately. It affects my own children today. They, of course, have help. <laughs> 
I had proof of the fact that I was born from surrogacy through a DNA test when I, was when I turned 30. I'm 31 today. But that was the physical proof because I always knew inside of me, inside, that I didn't fit in. I had problems with my mother. I saw that I didn't connect with her. I connected with my dad because a little bit more because he was biologically linked to me. But things didn't seem right. And I knew inside me something was wrong. We children, we're not stupid, you know. We're very, very smart people. <laughs> and not so long ago, uh, I was diagnosed with bipolar disease. Shouldn't shock any of you after everything I just told you. My biological mother, so my surrogate mother, she herself battles with mental issues. And I do believe I inherited that from her. But how could I know? I never had access to my medical records on her side and everything was hidden from me. And she could have lied during the process, eventually. In fact, when I got pregnant from my first child, Eleanor, I was scared to death. I was scared to death because I didn't know what I would be passing on to my baby. Cancer, a genetic disease, mental health issues. It's mind-boggling to me to find that in, that it's in the best interest of the child to hide all of this information from their, from, from them all their, of their lives, sorry. And that is a brief summary of my life. Very, very brief. I could speak for hours on my life and all the problems that surrogacy has caused me. There are always consequences. Look at me. Two people, my intended parents, 31 years ago, they made a small decision, then a bigger one, and then a more trivial one. And one decision after another, I came to the world. And on that day, I was the consequence of a small choice made by two people at a time when I didn't even exist. And this choice, it defined my entire existence. I'm a consequence, and I hope that soon it will be me who will bring about consequences to abolish the atrocity of surrogacy. But be careful, in my words, I, you'll never see me blaming my parents. They used a process that was just an offer, an option offered to them on a silver pla platter, and they didn't have the strength to resist it. Today, I don't feel any hatred for them. I don't blame them. I love them, but however, I do blame the system that is slowly but surely allowing surrogacy to be legalized. First, we approve the use of surrogacy for medical reasons, such as infertility, after we accept it for social reasons, and then we accept it for anything and everything. And for hu reasons of human trafficking, the sale of children, the unavailability of the human body for ethical, bioethical reasons, Surrogacy has to be abolished. But in my humble opinion, and I'm not uh, a doctor or I'm just a child, the greatest reason to abolish this monstrosity is for the sake of the child, for his or her rights, for a psychic balance that he or she, like me, may never ever regain. And I'm just gonna finish with this. And this is to all of you that may think that this is normal to, I mean, surrogacy is normal and we should maybe regulate it. If just one child like me has encountered so many problems in his or her life as a result of surrogacy, that should be enough to convince all of you that there's nothing good about this process and that nothing can make it ethical, despite all of your attempts to persuade yourself otherwise. Thank you for your time.